from the last conversation we had, something stood out. And that's, you're always learning. You're always curious about different things. You're going back down different rabbit holes. So what's caught your attention lately? Or what have you been learning about lately? Man, I'm so glad you asked. Because I was thinking about, I was thinking about this yesterday. And we were just talking about staying up super late, getting no sleep. Uh, well, last night at like 1 a.m., I'm looking up how to learn uh, writing in shorthand. Like the, uh, the hmm. there's like this form that journalists and doctors write in. And I guess this, statistically, it's like if you, normal writing is supposed to be like 20 to 30 words a minute, which is if you are a typist or whatever, that's really slow. Um, and then shorthand, you're supposed to be able to write like 200 words a minute. And it's like, I think the same thing that the court transcriptors or transcribers use to, to type on their things. So I'm like, why don't I just learn that? That would make so much like shit way easier when I'm writing shit in my journal or, or just like keeping notes of things. And like, it just, you know, so that's kind of caught my attention right now. I think obviously there's all sorts of design shit that I'm always just putting on the list of, I got to learn how to do this. Uh, yeah. Unreal, yeah. Yeah. Unreal Engine 5, like just anything. So <laughs> when, when you get into one of these rabbit holes or like these learning flow states moments, how do you go about like satiating that curiosity and that interest? How do you go about learning? To YouTube University and, and Google. And I, I know everybody says that, like you can pick any guru entrepreneur that makes those like obnoxiously hyper edited videos on TikTok. Uh, and they'll tell you the same thing. You can learn anything if you just spend time, you know, 20 hours a day just looking shit up on YouTube. And I'm like, yeah, okay, cool. But seriously, like I, you know, I'll go look up how to learn shorthand. And then I figure out there's three different versions of it. I'm like, okay, well, what the fuck am I going to do with that? I'm not learning three versions. So I'll figure one of them out. And then, you know, you find someone whose entire YouTube channel is dedicated to teaching someone how to learn shorthand for this specific one of three thing. And I'm like, as my, like in coming from the creator side, me as like a, as an entrepreneur, as a creator, as whatever, like business person, I would never be like, I'm going to start a, I, God, I can't remember the name. We'll just call it like John Adams style shorthand tutorial YouTube channel. That's like niche inside of niche inside of niche. Like no one's going to look at that until I fucking Google how to look up or how to, how to learn shorthand. It's crazy. And so it's, uh, it's weird because it's so cyclical. It comes back around to being like, how do I apply this to creator stuff too? Um, cause I'm always just seeing, you know, anything I'm learning, I'm trying to figure out how to critically apply it in all other aspects of my life. And I think that's gotten me really far. Um, and hopefully it gets me the rest of the way. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's wild, but YouTube will do it for you. TikTok is starting to become really effective in that area too. Um, but yeah, man. It reminds me of the story of, have you heard of the Khan Academy? I know what Khan Academy is, yeah, uh, but oh. I don't think I know what your story is Okay, about. so the story around it is it was started by this guy named Sal Khan, and I don't know what year, but it was early YouTube. Um, and he wanted, he had, I think, nieces and nephews out in America, I think, and they needed help okay. with their math homework, and he didn't have an easy way to show them and like kind of go through a lesson with them. So he sure. creates this video, uploads it to YouTube, and then it just gets sent, right? So like anyone can watch it, but it was more so so his like niece and nephew can watch it. Right. And next thing, people are picking this up and they're saying like, I, I need help with create more, like create on this, create on calculus, create on that, like yeah. I, I want this stuff. And I think he, the way he explains it is he had no idea. Obviously, everyone's going through math class, but he had no idea of the size and the scale of what this could be. Right. And it's the same thing. It's yes, math and, and shorthand are different markets in terms of their, no, their scope. Concepts, yeah. But wild how YouTube, TikTok, and now TikTok and some other platforms are just there as the educators. It blows me away. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's it's crazy. It's um it's like it's interesting to hear the startup of that too, because you're saying, well, you know, early days of YouTube, right? To us, it is just second nature that this information is available on YouTube and this is where you go if you need to find something. But to think about that moment where someone was like, holy fuck, I can upload like a myriad of informational content that will not just help one person one time, but it helps for decades. Like, I think that just spiraled. And like, 
I was using Khan Academy, excuse me, I was using Khan Academy when I was in school. And I fucking watched John Green and Hank, or Hank Green's Crash Course World History in World History class. That's the only reason I passed. I do not know fucking history, dude. Like, I cannot remember that shit. But they do such a good job of, of boiling it down into a consumable piece of content that takes 10 minutes to explain, like, why the Mongolians were insane. Uh, it's, like, incredible. It's amazing. It's just, it's, it's wild to think that that's only really existed for the better part of, like, 20 years. You know what I mean? So so true. You know what? I was just interviewing another creator a couple hours ago. And before this, we were talking about film and TV. And he was saying that he's a massive Star Wars fan. And I was saying to him, I was like, man, I realize that the storytelling in Star Wars is unbelievable. But I just can't get into it because the visuals seem so archaic we're to me. so similar. But, but we had a conversation. And so what you just said is now top of mind. I said to him, I was like, imagine if there was a way to allow our minds to be placed back in the time where we didn't realize what was innovated after that time. So like, I want to go back to the time where George Lucas created Star Wars and me as yeah. a viewer of, of television and film had no idea that this technology and this animation and Pixar and all that stuff was possible. Like I want to feel it in his right. flesh, but I have such a hard time doing that right now yeah. because of our reality that we live in to your point about YouTube to, for us feeling like it's quick, but like, the the essence of it is absolutely insane. Yeah, it's crazy. And you're so right because, God, we are so similar too. Uh, I feel like we had, this was in our discussion a few weeks ago of like how we have very similar stances and like, and like just energy on certain things. I'm the same way. My dad is a huge Star Wars fan. Um, and I call him a nerd every time. I'm like, you're so lame. Not really, but like, you know, uh, I'll, 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 you know, mess with him a little bit. Uh, I just don't, I don't get the appeal to Star Wars. I'm just like, you know, it's just not my thing. And he's, I've seen him. So he's made me watch them multiple times. I, I'm no stranger to it. And you're right. I think a major part of that is the the pure awe of, holy shit, how innovative and how incredible and what was previously not seen as possible has just been done, like made into, a, you know, 12 hours worth of film. Uh, it's crazy. It's unbelievable. And so, yeah, the same thing with YouTube where it's, like you said, I can Google how to write shorthand. Um, it's like, what if you couldn't Google how to do this calculus problem? And then somebody makes a channel that's dedicated to that. And you're like, oh my God, what a life savior. You know what I mean? Insane. Well, it kind of goes back to how you started on TikTok. Right? Like you were going about short Photoshop or After Effects tutor yeah. tutorials. And it was like, how do I... There was like the, how do you recreate this Billie Eilish photo in 10 seconds? Yes. And to think that like, that's the reality of what you were trying to create and to what you, you were just saying, like to think about that, you, know, you can take a photo that someone else put up and then literally in 10 seconds, I can show you how to have a similar effect. Yeah. M mind blowing. Is that why you, did you start with the idea of wanting to educate? Is that just a way to gain credibility? Why did you start with that like education perspective? I, you're going to laugh. I think this applies to every single facet of business and creation and exploration. Uh, the biggest driving factor is spite. It's just pure spite. And it's like, it applies to everything. You can, you can give me an example and I will tell you why spite has a huge role in that. And for me, it was almost like a response to what we just finished talking about, which was the YouTube tutorials. I think obviously there's variables that go into it that force this result, right? But I was so fucking tired of watching a 10 minute tutorial for something that could be explained in 30 seconds. I'm over it, right? I don't want to watch this. I'm going to watch it on two speed or click through. And you know, I'm, I've been doing- You don't Photoshop have the answers, Sway. Yeah. You don't, you don't, you don't know have the answers. fucking answers. <laughs> like you don't, you don't know how. Like, and it was the thing too, right? Like. I've used Photoshop for a decade and some change now. I'm 23, so I've been doing this since I had, you know, just figured out how to do pre-algebra. Like, <laughs> so I, I, if I, if you show me a picture, I can probably tell you three to five different ways on how to recreate that same thing. Like, it's just what I've been doing. But when you go on YouTube, you know, in order to hit that mid-roll threshold, the mid-roll ad threshold of I want to monetize this video, which to an extent, I don't blame them. Everyone's got to make their money. Everyone's, you know, everyone's got to pay bills. I was just so fucking tired of it that I was like, you know what? I'm going to make a TikTok page and I'm going to take these tutorials that should not be that long. And I'm going to challenge myself to make them in 10 seconds or less. And so 
I fucking did it for probably, I would say 50 videos before I switched up into like the main, you know, alternate reality branding thing, but that's, that's a different um, topic. But yeah, it's, so it became a thing of, uh, here's how to do this golden hour effect in 10 seconds. And I would record the steps. I would write it out, record the steps, splice it up. I would record my screen recording and then cut it up, line it up. And if it was 12 seconds, I would figure out how to shorten something because you can always take shit away. And it's ironic because um, it's the same thing we learn in art school, that every movement is a response to another thing. And so it's like the movement of like minimalism. Again, don't the art people, I go, already said go, go, go. history is not my thing. Go, it's go, like go. the Jackson Pollock response of expressionism to minimalism, where it's like, um, you know, expression, uh, excuse me, the other way around, minimalism responding to expressionism. And so it's like, here's all this crazy shit of flicking paint and like using shit and whatever and just making this like abstract thing. And someone's like, how do I like minimize that down to its barest form to the point where someone can still understand what it is? And so it's similar where it's like, you're spending 10 minutes explaining how to do something. I'm going to spend 10 seconds doing it. Dude, you just blew my mind. And I'll, t- <laughs> I'll tell you why you blew my mind. Jesus is insane. I am, I'm fascinated with talent and fascinated with like, what, what are the indicators of if you meet someone, if you talk to someone, how do you pick up that there's actually a chance that they're going to do something incredible in the future? Um, because I think when you're watching content, I get, it can give you a sense of like, oh, what are the skills that this person has? Sure. One thing that I picked up really early was if you can create out of spite and you can become the best out of spite, that shows me that you have the internal drive to do anything you fucking want to do in life. <laughs> and yeah, so man. you look at Childish Gambino, Childish love put him. out Awaken My Love and put out, um, put out Awaken My Love and then put out, I'm, uh, wow, oh, Redbone, which was more Redbone. of like a pop, yeah, which is more of like a pop tune. Yeah, because people said people said you couldn't, like you can't put out pop music, like you're only rap. And he's like, screw that. I'll put out a pop album and a pop single without any promo and without like a music video, and it'll go to whatever to number one. Then I was yeah. interviewing another creator, Grace Wells, and she was saying that she created out of spite because people had said, hey, you you look so much like X, like your content looks like X, and she's like, no, 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 it doesn't. I'm going to show you that it doesn't because fuck you. It like, this is not who yeah, I am. I love that. And crushes and viral video that springs her. Madeline Turner, same thing. And now you're saying this. Dude, so one that, that fires theme. me up. Uh, it's, yeah. dude, that's insane. Creating a, out of spite. So you have, it's essentially you have like a superpower. And sorry for everyone listening that I just went off. That just like hit me in my soul because <laughs> like I love identifying this stuff. So it, yeah, it, it almost feels like you have a superpower. Dude, if you can create out of spite and you can win out of spite, like, you can't be stopped. Yeah. I mean, in theory, yeah. And that's what's crazy is that, like, um, I'm Sicilian. I'm part Sicilian. So, like, things are going to piss me off for the rest of my life. You're going (laughs) to, things are going to piss me off for the rest of my life. And so it's just, like, how do I make this a positive energy of, like, um, you know, and I feel like even founders for startups, they do shit out of spite. I talk with founders all the time and they're like, I started this company because uh, my wife had a bad experience at a car dealership. And so now I'm changing the way that people buy cars. That's, that's a, the first thing that came to top of my head. His name is, um, shit. I think I Nate, know exactly. I can't pronounce. I yeah, I Nate exactly with Rev you're up. talking about. Yeah. He's gonna, if he sees this, he's gonna laugh because I don't know how to pronounce his last name. But he, I mean, his entire thing is founded off of like, I don't want anyone to go through the headache that my wife did and, and now they're crushing it. And that applies to everybody. It's, it's like um, any startup founder, they're like, I was pissed off at something. And so out of spite, I made something else that fixed it. And like, that's going to be a repeating cycle for till the end of time. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it's MJ. It's MJ mentality. Have you watched uh, The Last Dance? I have. I love that. Yeah. You know those, you know, some of the episodes where it's like MJ was having a decent game, whatever. And then someone said, like, better luck next time to him. Yeah. <laughs> and the next game, yeah, he just went it's, off. It's over. Pack it up. Pack it and up. It, and it's hilarious to, to listen to the teammates be like, when we heard that, we knew yeah, they were like, the, the next game, 
the next game, something special was about to happen. And so it's, yeah. it's super impressive. Have you, have you met anyone else, creators, family, friends, whoever, that also create out of spite that are close to you? Um, I have a really good friend named Denisha Carter, and she's uh, a fascinating creator. She's brilliant. Um, and her, I, I wouldn't say, I won't speak for her, but I think that she makes a lot of her content based off of the fact that she's irritated with people not being able to see the objective truth to most things. Like, to, or just an objective conversation about, like, this can be good and bad at the same time. That doesn't mean you have to demonize the other side. It doesn't mean that you are, like, elevated to a superior status. That kind of is the central theme for a lot of her stuff. And she applies it to everything. It's to, to scandals on social media or to political stuff or, you know, the most recent thing of, of I think I read a tweet about her and, like, the, the economy of tipping and how it's, like, you know, and how it's, like, the, the idea that tipping is kind of something that, especially with, you know, we're going to restaurants and waiters and stuff, that's the most obvious thing, um, how it kind of lets these corporations get away with paying their uh, uh, workers a much lower wage because they're saying, well, you're getting paid low rate plus tips. And it's like, so it's, you know, it falls onto the, the customer. And I think obviously no customer wants to be like, yeah, let me just add an extra, you know, 30% onto my bill um, for something that should be covered by the restaurant. But like I tip regardless. And so she had an interesting point. And, you know, it's one of those where you don't have to agree, you don't have to disagree, but it's just something to think about where she was saying like the only real way to stop that is to stop tipping. And in the temporary, that hurts a lot of people. It's a really difficult thing to do because it, it basically makes it very difficult for waiters to do their job. But then she says, in theory, like it'll, it will turn into companies having to pay their uh, employees more because the waiters will stop doing it. They'll stop working for that low wage. And so it's, again, I, I, that was kind of a hyper-specific example, but she, I think, creates out of spite. And I, I, I respect and admire that about her so much. And I think a lot of people do it maybe to various degrees, right? Like maybe some are not as for face forward about it. Um, but I think, you know, even what we've just talked about, I think it was prior to us, like just right before this conversation, you're saying, I noticed that we were just doing this, this and this, like on this, uh, on this, on banknotes. And I thought, you know, this, that's so lame. Like, let's change it. And so that's spite. Like, that's like someone saying, well, you can't do that or we do it this way or it's always been done this way. And I'm like, you want to, you want to bet? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's kind of like that. It's so, that was kind of the thing that, that it just, it's such a universal thing. And I, I do think that a, I would argue that 99.9% .9 of successful people do things out of spite. Hmm. Love that. Okay. The thing that pops yeah. my mind is, and I'm not one to go chronologically and go like, all right, so you did this in your life and then what sure. happened next? But <laughs> yeah. you talk about, there's a system and a lot of the time that system is just built arbitrarily and we're following that sure. system because that's what other people have done. So like that's what the leaders have done and that's what we're going to continue to do and that same cycle evolves. But then there's a couple of people that'll come into the system and go, no, that's not right. I don't think this way. Let me change it. And then there's outcry. But after outcry kind of becomes the settling period and you're like, you know what? After history's played itself out, Noah was Noah was totally right. Like, wow, like what a, what a visionary. Or how did no one see right. this before? And it almost feels like the content you're creating now, this like escapism essentially for brands, this alternate reality for brands. A lot of brands put so much money, man, into, into their brand and their lines and their color and all that stuff. And you're kind of saying, hey, what if your brand wasn't this way? Like, do you find that yeah. there's ever pushback of fans of the brand or the brand itself? Oh, yeah. All the time. And that's really? what makes it so fun. That's yeah. what makes it so fun. <laughs> It's a, uh, I'm not one to seek out controversy. I actually like avoid, I avoid like discourse online all the time. Cause I just, I, you know, um, backstory. I played a lot of video games growing up and like, I'm talking Xbox modern warfare two lobbies and stuff. And so you can imagine the archetype of like the discussion that goes on in a, in a call of duty lobby where nobody's seeing their faces. So it's pretty brutal. So I've just been like, I've gotten that out of my system of like, trash talking other people on xbox um so I, I like just side note but um yeah and I, and it's it's something that i've actually had to learn and i've had to unlearn uh things from design school because of it and so when you're in design school they tell you to be open like be open for feedback everybody you know 
can give you feedback. Everyone can can help you be better. And and you know, there's specific people. Obviously, like that's within the context of a classroom. Um, sure. I get I get on TikTok and someone says this is fucking dog shit, and I'm like, well, that hurt. Um, and so I'm like, well, I need to figure out why because I want to make it better. I don't want this to occur. And so. Like, hey, I'm so sorry you feel that way. Like, you know, customer service voice or whatever in the comments. <laughs> and it just never, it's, and it took me a while. I'll actually tell you, there's a, a big streamer called XQC. Um, he's like, oh, I, I think, think I've he, seen, I think I've seen, yeah, seen that name. Huge, huge okay. streamer. I think he just got suppressed by Kai Sinat, but um, he, you know, he's pulling 70, 80,000 viewers regularly for 10 hours. It's un- unbelievable. Jesus. But, there was a moment in time where I made a video because someone commented, you should do uh, if XQC, the streamer, owned a restaurant. And I was like, oh, that's that's kind of tight. Like, And I was I was doing creators, owning brands and stuff too. So it was like, this is totally in line with my current content, like mm. streamline or whatever. Um, so I did it. And um, I realized that like probably five minutes after I posted it, it had been posted to a subreddit probably six times already. Like before I even had a chance to go and upload it as like, I'm the guy who made this, people had already uploaded it, right? Um, and it kept going and his fan base, I'm, you know, I, I think there is very specific personality of people that watch, watch him, but, um, it was getting a lot of pushback. Um, and I don't mm. think it was necessarily because of the design. I think it's people were getting upset that it was being posted so many times in the subreddit, the repost thing. Right. Mm. Um, well, long story short, it ends up getting in front of him on stream and he watches it and he, does not react like a normal person. He's like, oh, that's so sick or whatever. He was like, what? Watches it again. And he goes, that was interesting. And he moves on. And like, that was the whole thing, right? I was mm. hyped because I was like, I can't believe he saw it. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, and then I get a comment and someone's like, I can't even remember. They were super vulgar about it, but they were like, you know, this dog shit ass video, XQC said he hated it. Everyone else hates it. Quit fucking sending your people over here to post it. I'm tired of seeing this like stupid fucking video. Jeez. And I was like, what the hell spawned that? And mm. I commented, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm sorry I feel that way, but I didn't send anybody over here. They did it on their own account. And I honestly would, I do not have an incentive to have them post it because I would want the karma or the, the like, you know, the points for getting a, it upvoted or whatever. So it doesn't help for me. For sure. Yeah. Um, and I, I actually, that one messed with me so much that mm. I was like watching videos on how to deal with hate. And wow. one of the things that stuck out to me the most was like, we all learn to be open-minded for critiques and feedbacks and stuff. Um, truth be told, in this position, you just kind of have to not. Mm. And mm. you have to be a little bit closed-minded, especially with mm. the vulnerability and the open, like the openness of people being able to say something with, zero remorse, zero yeah. consequence. Yeah. Um, and the one thing they said is if somebody is uh, like, if somebody is critiquing you and it feels like they're being an asshole, it's because they're being an asshole. Um, and he said, if, if someone mm. is actually smart enough or credible enough to be giving you feedback, they will be able to give it to you in a way where you feel like it's feedback. And that has mm. stuck with me ever since. So anytime mm. I feel slightly like this, you're just coming after me to be a dick. I just like, you're not worth it. And, that may be controversial and it's something that is against like that. design, right? But it's a it's a thing. And so I honestly forgot what the original question was, but yeah. N- no. That has no, no, oh, no. the controversy. Yeah. So I've definitely spawned controversy, but that's how I've dealt with it. Is just being like, I kinda don't give a shit and I'm gonna keep making this regardless of whether or not user three hundred and seventy two from Ohio is like gonna approve of it or not, you know? Hmm. Mm. Yeah, man. What about uh, so many things there? One, I think that's super profound, right? It's thanks. This the system is usually like I, it, that. Just made me think because I've lived twenty seven years, and it's always like, yeah, be open to feedback, um, and you know, like hold opinions, but like or have strong opinions, but like loosely held. Hmm. Yet, I think that that advice comes from a place where. The internet wasn't around. Short form discovery wasn't around. People getting thrown visuals and people's faces and voices and stuff in their face every single day, that wasn't around. And so there has to be a way we talk about the system, right? And the system has to change. I think that mentality makes a shit ton of sense, man. A shit ton of sense. And you know yeah. what it, it reminds me of? I was just recording an episode. It hasn't come out yet. 
or I'm sure when this comes out, it'll be out. But sure. I was talking with a, a great YouTuber uh, her named Sarah Renee Clark, and we were saying oh, it'd be so much easier to deal with comments if it said how long the person has been subscribed or followed you for and how many hours of content they've watched. Because if it's like someone that's watched so many hours of your videos and has been right. a follower for a year and they keep, yeah. and they keep following, then it's like, you know what? Maybe that perspective is important because there's intention behind it. But Absolutely. if it's Ohio 758, who's like, you suck, you're an idiot. You don't know what you're doing. Get the hell off the earth. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, I have no idea who you are. You just, you just came by me once, get to know me twice and maybe we can talk. Yeah. Exactly. That would be great. Metrics of that. And it, it's, I think that's the core concept of like, what's your credibility? Because mm -hmm. like, it's the same thing of, of even with, um, with shows or TV shows or movies or whatever, it's like, you find that you want to keep your core audience happy while still moving into new demographics. And like, mm. that's difficult, because yeah. not everyone's going to be happy about it. But it's the thing of you can kind of tell when someone's been a fan of a show or whatever and they're critiquing it, you know they have the credibility to be talking about that versus, oh, I saw this one season and I thought it was amazing and like I, you know, whatever, this and this. And it's like interesting, hmm. interesting how that plays. Yeah, man. Yeah, well, you know what this brings up though is right, we're talking about what you're doing today, this alternate reality branding. Yeah. And you just brought up a really solid point of, again, like the marketer mindset of find the core audience, keep appeasing, but the only way to grow is to get exposure to more and more people. So the dark side is like, oh, you're giving this new, you're giving this traditional brand a new face. Who gives you the right to do it? But on the other side, it's, well, this is going to expose them to so many new people that yes, maybe 95% will hate it, but maybe new 5% are like, oh, well, I didn't see yeah. Gucci in that way. Maybe I should check them out. So I think what you're doing is super powerful. Thank you. Yeah. And that's, that's the, the mindset that I have. And hmm. part of it's just like pure anarchist that I'm like, I can't wait to take this so traditional like Mark and, and beloved and like uh, really like well-known system and just yeah. make it look stupid. Like, hmm. or, you know, take something that's luxurious, like royalty paralleled, like whatever, and turn it into a child's like kid's toy brand. Like make it so, you know what I mean? So not... Yeah. Uh, yeah. so not expensive so not whatever and like I wanted to see if I could still there's there's two challenges it was one if I could make it so detached from its original meaning that you could actually look at it from a new light like mm. Mm. so out, like for, and I would pick very established brands like Walmart Gucci uh, McDonald's stuff like where it's like their branding is ingrained and people know what it looks like and so mm. is there a way that I can redesign this to where it just is entirely separated from what people know about it Hmm. Um, and then I got the feedback that was, well, this doesn't look like the original brand. And I'm like, no shit, Sherlock. That's the entire fucking point. Like, um, <laughs> but it, you know, it's the, it was enough of that where I was like, well, what if I, what if I was able to maintain the brand system, but mm. sell something different? And so it was, it, you know, I think that's slightly easier in a different way because it, the system's already there. You just have yeah. to re like recontextualize it. Yeah. Um, and so that's when I started doing, um, I would take their old logo and turn it into a new logo that was representative of like the new product they're selling. Hmm. So, yeah, hmm. it was, uh, it's interesting. Yeah, Excuse man. Me. Wow. I, I think the idea of what we were talking about earlier, and I guess like we can kind of get into it now, but the cool thing about what you do as a creator is you have your public facing content, this alternate reality design s content but then you consult and you you help brands and you help help them with brand design and logos and all that stuff on the side what an unbelievable way to showcase like your cross the spectrum understanding of what yeah. the integrity of a brand needs to be but also how to completely redesign a brand so that there's new emotional attachment new meaning even if it, even if it stems from the same place really right thank you yeah i really appreciate that was and that I, the I, was that intentional from the jump to showcase like the to showcase, of that to showcase both sides yeah as your tiktok content to get it to a point where it's like let me build my credibility versus it just being fun creation yeah i think i think it turned into building credibility cool. i think initially like obviously like we just talked about it was out of spite um mm. but it was also just fun to um 
create things that had not been created before, or at least that I'm not aware of that had been created before. Yeah. And see how the public reacted and mm. see how like things would go. And, and like, you know, it's one, it's one thing to, to put a project in your portfolio that's like, I made this fake brand. It's another thing to be like, I eviscerated the <laughs> meaning of like McDonald's and turn into something else because that shows to the, to the trained people, to the, you know, the, the people who've been in there longer, it's like, it's a lot more difficult to do that and pull it off successfully than it is to just like change the typeface or change the mark. That's like cleaner, more modern, whatever you want to call it. So mm. it was fun. It turned into credibility, but I'll tell you, uh, it's a blessing and a curse because obviously when I make a TikTok, I do it because it's entertaining and it's fun and it's whatever. Um, and a lot of the stuff, most actually 100% of the work that I have right now is referrals that have stemmed from TikTok. Like I don't do wow. any outreach. I don't do any. Wow. It's just people coming to me saying, I've seen your TikTok or I talked to you at VidCon or at this, you know, this one meetup. And like we have this startup, this company, this my mom, my dad, my sister, my brother, like they have this Amazing. thing. And I'm like, yeah. let's talk. Yeah. Wow. But I found that it's kind of become my portfolio, whether or not I like that. Mm. And so obviously I have. I'm I, I'm a, I'm a great designer. I have great work that's professional and school projects that I can that I can show you. But mm. everyone's first impression mm. is these somewhat non-serious, joking, like pick, picking fun videos. Where I'm not even going to say that the work is necessarily the greatest part, but it's just the concept, right? Or the execution, mm. right? Sure. And so it's kind of one of those where people will come and say, "I like your TikToks. So I want a TikTok logo," and I'm like, "Well, like, do you really?" Um, Hmm. Because I can make you something way better, uh, yeah. and so it's it's a double edged sword. It's I'm still figuring out how to manage it to be quite quite transparent with you, but yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So I think probably most creatives run into that issue too if they make content that is paralleled with their work. Yeah, uh, and so yeah, and so what are you? That's a yeah. That, that's something I've never I've never thought of. Obviously, I'm not in your position, but it makes a lot of sense what you're saying. How have you been thinking about those next steps, the next things you do to potentially counteract it and or lean in 100% to it and use it as your, your advantage? Yeah, I, uh, I've kind of been thinking about it in one of two ways. And I, I may have put myself at this crossroads and it's not necessary, but it's kind of become more prevalent. Um, is that after hitting a million followers, I like kind of took a step back and reevaluated re what I wanted to do um, with the channel, with content, et cetera. Yeah. And there was a moment where I was looking like, I can go all in on being a creator and doing creator the creator path, brand deals, uh, like growing, all focused on growth, AdSense, ad revenue, like that stuff. It's like, or I can use this to leverage my business and focus on my business. And mm. I'm not saying it has to be like a mutually exclusive thing where if I focus on my business, I can't grow. Sure. Um, but there is a bit of, of gap there where like if I'm leaning into creator, I'm full focus on entertainment, on interest, et cetera. I'm not focused on like I need to prove my credibility. If yeah. I'm focused on the other, that's, that's the inverse. It's like I'm not necessarily focused on entertainment as much as I'm focused on look at what I'm capable of. You should hire me for your next project. And mm -hmm. so... I don't think that there is a happy medium between that, unfortunately. Uh, but I think there are ways that I can still get the cake and icing too, um, depending on what I end up going for. And I think, honestly, I'm leaning more into the business side. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because, you know, to an extent, the, like if I wanted to say grow or, like as a really big creator, I'm going to have to make my content less niche over time. It's going to have sure. to be more evergreen because sure. that's just how the like pawn ripple of reaching new audiences works. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I want that. Mm. And so, uh, again, I don't have the answer and I wish I did, but that's kind of yeah. how I'm, that's how I'm perceiving yeah. it. And that's how I'm kind of attacking it is like, how do I get the best of both worlds while still retaining my dreams that I have for both of those like mm. different verticals, if you will. Yeah. You talk retaining dreams with both verticals and your client work. Yes, it's creative and there's an element of freedom, but it's not the same as you on TikTok doing whatever the right. hell you want to do and not monetizing. And I heard you on another podcast saying that the moment you start monetizing, there's a good chance it doesn't become fun. There's a good chance that passion turns into work or that passion turns into pressure. Is that how you're still thinking about creating content? Is that still why you're not really working with brands so that there is that purely a passion muscle 
and nothing interrupts that? It's probably a reason why. And I, I actually haven't even, so great question. Like, I haven't even thought about that in that way because I do remember saying that. And I, I do believe that's still truth, like the, sure. uh, how things work. But I do shy away from brand stuff, one, because I don't want it to become this like crazy, um, you know, I don't want it to become this crazy thing that I feel like I have to do, that I have mm. to go make content. I, you know, I'm, I, it's yeah. how I keep my roof over my head. Um, but at the same time, I, I think that also could just be from I haven't found the right brands that mm. really align with the content that I make. And um, making content with them is like a kid's dream of like, if I remember when I was Adobe, if you're listening or whatever, if you end up seeing this, like, I'm, I'm just I'm just kidding. I'm lying about what I'm about to say. <laughs> um, but when I'm downloading cracked versions of your programs and like making, you know, esports Twitter headers and shit like that, uh, I never in my wildest dreams would imagine that I'd be in the arena to work with Adobe or to work mm. with Photoshop or Illustrator or like yeah. just and these people that I'm it's it's fascinating. And so mm. I don't want to say that monetizing it sucks the joy out of it, but I do think there's a level of responsibility that comes with it that is not so much easily as like I can just drop this whenever I want. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, no. So with you. Well, take me to the other side. Take me to uh the like the most positive place. What is the coolest experience that has come out of you posting and re and augmenting brands that like a brand has leaned into and you would have never expected the opportunity to be at hand? Yeah. Oh man. Um I have a couple and I'm gonna I'm gonna name drop just because it's exciting. Go. I think I've yeah, told you go these, these before, but Okay, go um, ahead. when I was doing Photoshop tutorials, um mm -hmm. I ended up getting followed by David Guetta, the DJ. And this is the guy that I listened to radio music for like since I was like eight, right? And I'm like, oh, it's gotta be a mistake, right? Like there's no way. Like David Guetta has fucking nothing to do with Photoshop, right? Like your Photoshop tutorials. Yeah. He followed like 40 people and I was one of them. And he still follows me to this day. And I even messaged him. I was like, dude, I literally grew up on your music and he liked it. He didn't respond because he's David Guetta. He doesn't have to. That's, <laughs> that's whatever. And it's like, but like that was surreal. And mm -hmm. I, I mean that. And, you know, even after the logo stuff, Jason Derulo reached out hmm. completely unprovoked, like hmm. didn't like a video on TikTok that I could have seen a notification or whatever. The end me was like, love your work, period. And I was like, holy shit. You went, okay, another extremely influential musician that I grew up listening to. Yeah. And so we chatted back and forth, and there was talk about doing a collab and stuff. And wow. there's even a rough draft video hidden in my archive somewhere. But um, uh -huh. wow. it's it never it never saw the light of day, and maybe it will sure. sometime. But sure. um, yeah, I mean, it's things like that where I can text my parents, like, hey, you remember when we were listening to this song when I was like 10, and we listened to it on repeat all the time? It's so like, crazy. yeah, that artist wants to work with me now because of this fucking 10 second TikTok that I just made. Like, it's insane. It's it's it, truly incredible. It is insane, man. It is insane. Right? The idea of, especially with these platforms that are pushing content all over the place, you have no idea. You have no idea who's watching you, man. And right. it doesn't even have to be TikTok. Like I just had it being done to me on on LinkedIn today. Some guy wanted to connect, and I was like, "Oh, I respect this creator." and obviously followed and hit a message and was like, dude, really appreciates your stuff. I was like, actually come on the pod. Like, I love what you're doing. Um, and a little bit more personal than, than just, oh, thanks, man. Like, sure. come on the pod. Yeah. But again, he's never liked any of the stuff. He's never viewed my profile. Um, and he's like, oh, man, I've been following your, yeah, I love your LinkedIn posts. And I was like, what, bro, but like it. Like, I didn't know you yeah. were following my stuff. <laughs> right. But, it, but it's absurd, man. It's like you're throwing a flare into the air. And you're giving the internet the opportunity to go, okay, cool. Let me help you find the person that you never knew would actually align with you. But yes, I want to put that, I want to put them in front of you. What a crazy way. What a crazy world. It's wild. And it's, it's a high that I'll probably chase for the rest of my life. Like it is, <laughs> it's just, it's surreal. It's like not even descriptive enough for what yeah. the feeling is. How do but, you, yeah. tell me this, how do you think of responding to these people? Because I, 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 I again, it's maybe happened twice to me where I was like, "Whoa, okay, you know who I am because of my content, cool." And you reached out. For you, I'm sure it happens all the time. But I get, I get on my high school bullshit. I'm like, "Ah, do I send a period? 
do I go three lines? They only sent three yeah. words. Do I? How do you? Yeah. <laughs> how, do, how do you think about that scenario to try continue this relationship, this friendship, this conversation? Yeah, maybe I'm just too stupid to know better. Um, <laughs> but I don't have any problem expressing to them the like how Sick. like significant this conversation is. Like I'll cool. I'll say I dude I'm so I'll say like man I'm so beyond blown away right now like. Thank you so much. Uh, cool. I've been listening to your music since I was eight. Done. Like, it's literally so like that. And I, you know, yeah. I'm sure there's people who probably don't like that, who don't like, oh, he's a fan, like, whatever. Um, then, you know, you. That's, just, just you. that's just me. And it's like, I, I find it so freeing to be so um, mm -hmm. vulnerable and just like, and just showing love and admiration, knowing that this the person on the other end is someone who's like, has been extremely influential. And so... Um, I don't know if it's better or worse to do that, but I know that it, it, it it's is. who I am. It's how I operate. And it's just, you know, I feel like it's so much more fun and so much better for everybody involved to let someone mm -hmm. know when you really appreciate them. And, yeah, yeah. you know, so it's just, yeah, I'll say the same thing. Yeah. And like, I literally will DM David again and be like, I fucking love your music <laughs> so much. Like, just want to let you know that. Yeah, um, no, so, worthy, uh, worthy, so worthy. Well, tell me, Tell me how you've overcome that that vulnerability. Listening to this pod that you were on previously, you were saying that growing up, there was some confidence, some some issues, some anxiety socially mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that. But you got to a point where you just shared who you were organically on TikTok, yeah. purely vulnerable, and you did it over and over and over. And now you are who you are. I, I'm sure we always deal with, again, image issues and, and, and confidence, sure. but I'm sure now it's like min minuscule versus where it used to be. What made you take that leap? Like what made you have this, that perspective to kind of get over that hump? Oh man. Uh, I think it honestly had to do with me coming out when I was 18 and Got you. that was a, it was terrifying. Uh, mm. you can ask anybody who's had to come out and it's, yeah. it's one of the most mortifying experiences of their life. And, um, the reactions were mixed, obviously, mm. and, and, you know, there mm. were, I asked to keep it a secret between people and it turned into a little bit of drama because I got outed and so I had to deal with all that, right? Shit. Um, Shit. But I said to myself, I was like, I've been hiding this since I was, you know, old enough to know better and mm. um, I'm not going to do that. Like, I, mm. you know, and it was really about financials too where it was like, I don't want there to be any issues of, you know, get out of our house type thing or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, um, hmm. but it was a matter of being at this moment. I'm gonna I'm gonna be who I am, and if you like that, great. If you don't, I couldn't care less. And hmm. again, like this is such a like stereotypical coming out thing. But honestly, if I hadn't done that when I was 18, would not be making TikToks today. I just wouldn't. Damn. Like, I would not be Crazy. comfortable enough with myself to to make shit like that. You know, hmm. Hmm. and. Um, there's actually a moment where, and I actually, I have this screenshot saved. I'll send it to you if you want to, yeah, if you want to edit yeah. it in or uh, send it to your editor, but yeah, please. Uh, a friend of mine from school, uh, we're probably talking two, three months out of graduation, hmm. which is right around the time that I started uh, making TikToks. Sorry. Cool. Um, a friend of mine sent me a screenshot of a group chat he was in and someone had said, oh my God, I just came across uh, a TikTok from Noah on my For You page. And like with laughing emojis and they were like, oh my God, send, send, send. Like, I got to see this, send it. And he was like, well, he has like 7,000 followers. It's like, well, you know, actually that's kind of sick or whatever. Right. And I have that saved. And now I'm like, I'm thinking back to it. I'm like, oh, I wonder what they think now. Like, hmm. Um, hmm. and you know, cause it's one of those where, um, they weren't directly talking shit, but you can see the vibe of it. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, I was like, yeah watch like watch me like the yeah. spite thing <laughs> here's the spite watch me yeah mm. watch me and so i remember mm. i made i was so like fuck this is the one of my biggest fears was people making fun of me for it yeah like, especially friends from school or people that i knew right 100. and um after like it kind of i saw that they were like we can't even make fun of him because this video is good and he's like obviously <laughs> seeing success i'm like yeah fuck yeah like i'm gonna keep doing this shit this feels great yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Do you have with the perspective and, and the life that you've lived, I don't know if you've shared a lot of this stuff publicly, mm -hmm. but 
if you have, or even if you haven't, do you find a lot of people coming to you for advice who are trying to get into content or trying to be creators who are potentially coming out and they don't know what will happen and how to deal with that stuff? Um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not as, as front facing with my sexuality on TikTok as much. So I don't, sure. I don't think there's that facet of it. Sure. Um, I do I, occasionally, yeah, people will come for advice and, cool. and I'm more than happy to say what I know. But um, surprisingly enough, like I'm still kind of working on that. You know, I don't I don't have mm-hmm. as big of a of a circle of friends or community or uh, creators that you would imagine. So I think it's an interesting reality. You spoke about something earlier. You're like, there's there is this responsibility of how you present yourself on the Internet and, and what that looks like. And so there's the one side where again. It's amazing because you can throw yourself out there and people can reach out and be like, holy shit, who are you? Or you're a massive fan. Holy shit, you're incredible. And you're like, what? This isn't hot. Like we would have never met probably in in our life, but now this is happening. And then the other side where you may be too vulnerable, right? Like you're you're sharing too much and then people get really invested in your life. And then you kind of, you kind of can't turn it off without people getting so deep. How do you decide what to share and what not to share? Because obviously the idea of and the reality of having to come out and deal with that trauma and deal with that situation can be a light for a lot of people, but then can also force you into into a corner, a certain type of personality and content that might affect you. Yeah, 100%. Um, God, I wish there was a right answer. Mm. <laughs> I, I think that it's it is one of those things that it's it depends on what you want to do. Mm. I have I have friends and creators or mutuals who are very open about this stuff and very talkative and they pay the price for it. Uh, but they, they get the benefit of that. Like you just said, people yeah. look up to them and, and reach out like that. Hmm. Um, I think for me personally, at least in the moment, I won't say that this is, this is the future plan or whatever, but in the moment I was like, I don't want to focus on anything else, but making cool shit and inspiring hmm. people to make other cool shit, That's you it. know? That's and it. I didn't want, who I am or who I choose to love or, or what I choose to do outside of that to affect mm. um, either either positively or negatively. I didn't want it to affect what um, the people were viewing. I wanted it to be not necessarily objective because I still have personality in there, but I wanted it to be as focused on sharing my work and sharing my creations and my ideas with the world um, as possible. I didn't want that to be diluted with like, controversy surrounding well you know but he's gay or or he does this or he whatever and it's like yeah all right so Mm -hmm. we just focus on the design (laughs) yeah yeah you know what just pops into my mind is kanye right now man so many people have devalued his music have said i don't like kanye anymore i can't listen to kanye anymore and even though we to your earlier point like we get taught i try to try decouple the creation from the human um people have a really hard time like i have friends that love kanye and we used to always jam over yay and go to concerts yeah. together and now they're like screw this guy everything he said on regardless whatever topic and how he's acted i can't listen to him anymore and so i think it's sensible on your side You're like for the time being you'll let the work speak and mm-hmm. then if people are interested they can reach out to you and get to know you and right. you can build that relationship that way yeah, absolutely. And I think that evolves, you know, over time. And I'm, mm. I'm, I'm not like, I'm pretty indifferent to Kanye. I, I, I know that a lot of people, and he has made some incredible music. And I also know he's made some really stupid decisions. And mm. um, I, you know, I have my thoughts and I have my like opinions on shit that he said, and they're about what you would expect. But mm. I also, um, I, I think I, he had like a Netflix series that I ended watching because I was so curious, because regardless... Yeah. That was you crazy. cannot deny it that he's one of the most successful musicians of our generation, like mm-hmm. if not mm-hmm. the most successful. Um, and so I was watching his come up and it's fascinating because he's so, so different, um, which anyone's going to be different 30 years ago, 20 years ago, right? Sure. But his mindset is so much like, I don't give a shit about anything else but making the best work I can possibly make. Mm. Like, and that was it. And that's what got him to where he was, right? And I think... I don't think what he's doing is marketing. Maybe it is, maybe whatever. I don't know. But I think to, at a certain point, like once people know you're the best, how are you going to continue garnering interest? Mm. And it's not because you're 
skill for maintaining skill like it's the thing of when you're at the top of the scoreboard the only way people are going to start paying more attention is when you leave the top of the scoreboard when yeah. someone surpasses you and it's yeah. like it's it's uh yeah it's and so you're right it, it's similar to that where i don't see the value of adding injecting all of that all at once into it i still think i have a long ways to go until people are like he's undeniably like the best and then you know Maybe I'll start talking about my social life. Maybe I'll start talking about this or doing whatever, and not in the same way that that Ye is doing it. But yeah, that's kind of that's kind of the vibe. Is is mm. you know I'm no PR expert, but I can tell you right now that like I've been turned off to shit because of things the creator has said or done or whatever. Mm. Ir- like not irregardless, regardless of what they, what how beautiful something they've made is. Just mm. you just I am not one of the people that separates those two, especially yeah. if you use something from your personality or your your experiences as a human to create it's impossible to there's no way you can ask someone to do that because it wasn't mm-hmm. created separate from their from their human from their personality it was made with that in mind so mm-hmm. you know well talking legacy man because this is such an interesting conversation but talking legacy tell me a bit more about you what do you want to be known for like it could be now it could be if you have thought about this just in the future, like what do you want people to say? What do you want people to associate with you? Oh uh, man, what a deep question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, it's, it's great. I love yeah. it. I, I think I, I want to be remembered as someone who made some of the best things that the generation had seen. And then mm. whether that's design, like created some of the best things, whether that's design, whether mm. that's um, a piece of art, a brand, whatever it is. It's like, I want to be the one that in the history books, like when people are saying what he created was so legendary that nobody can forget about it. It was so monumental and so historically shifting that um, he's like, he is a moment, like he was a shift. And like, Mm. that's what I want to be, you know? (laughs) That's powerful, man. Thank you, man. Well, then I, I, I have to ask, because that gives me like Tyler, the, the creator vibes. He's got such moment mentality. Um, yeah. But you've had a very, in a very diverse, and I'd say pretty interesting background, right? There's, there's video games, there's going to design school, there's branding, there's being a creator. You've, you really have lived a lot. And I know from the t- first part, the first question where I asked you, you know, what are you on? And you're like, oh man, there's so much. I'm always learning and I'm always trying to yeah. apply it. But to have a mindset of like, I want to be a moment and like, I want to be, rem- I really want to be remembered for something in my generation. Who is it that inspired you that created moments or that are now known in their generation that you look up to? Yeah. Um, it's, it's probably like a camaraderie thing too, okay. because I, I, I think especially now, and maybe this is a repeating thing through history, but I feel like there's points when generations get to a certain age where they start seeing it as an us versus them thing versus the other generations. Like, well, you mm. won't you won't get it. You're a Gen X. Or you're a boomer. You just don't get it, right? Like, we're we're Gen Z. Like, we get it. And so, and unfortunately, like, and and I have the same thing where I think like you guys don't understand us. And how mm. could you? How can mm. we expect you to understand us given that the context of when we both grew up is so nauseatingly different? Um, <laughs> there's no way you could be able to apply like that to what we're at right now and i'll tell you it's kind of dark but i think it spawned some fascinatingly inspiring things uh when the parkland Mm. shooting happened in florida to those Mm. those high school kids and um it's devastating because i was a year older than them or you know something like that and i watched these kids become a movement become a moment of like um it was like David Hogg and like, um, gosh, uh, Emma Gonzalez, I think. And there was a couple of people who turned that into their chance to be heard. And it, mm. it was massive, mm. uh, regardless of like, you know, oh, well, but, you know, they just did that so they could get into Harvard or whatever. It's like, I think that's a little horseshit. Like, you're mm. so out of touch. Um, but I remember talking to my partner about that and being like, that's probably one of the first times I've seen people of our generation be a moment, like make Mm. a moment. And yeah, you know, you can talk Mm. to musicians, whatever, but I was like, I feel so um, inspired by them that, you know, to that degree, I want to be, I want to be remembered. Like I remember when that happened and I remember what they were able to create. 
So damn, damn. Hey, dude. It, again, this is the thing that I love about running a podcast with creators that I'm super interested in, purely just from the content. Like we again, we've had a chance to talk yeah. before, so I, I do know a little bit more about you. But you can't get any of this from the content, right? Like you right. can get a bunch. You can get a, here's a charismatic guy who's really smart, really creative, good with tools, master of his craft, whatever, whatever. Um, <laughs> like, gassing me out. I'm just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> but this is, it, this comes back to, I got a question from someone a couple weeks ago being like, how do we find a creator that is going to, that we want to invest in for the re, for like the next five years and that really wants to build and really wants to make a moment or really wants to make an impact? And how do we attach ourselves to them? How do we find them? They're like, what metrics do you use? What platform do you use? Yeah. I, I was like, do you run a podcast? Like find those people <laughs> and just smart. bring them on a pod because you get to hear this and you're like, holy shit. Okay, the way you're thinking about things and the way you get impacted and how you turn that into momentum somewhere else and then like where your vision is and where your goals are, it's, again, you don't get this from a screen. Like you get this from just that interaction and hearing all of yeah. this. Again, man, I keep using this word, but, but powerful, dude. The fact that you're only 23 and you have this perspective and you have this, this vision and this work ethic right now. Like, imagine momentum in 10 years. Like, you're only 33 at that point. Like, that <laughs> that's mind-blowing. Oh, you man. mean I'm old? Oh, fuck. I'm just kidding. <laughs> God, yeah, I'm 33 and, like, just decrepit and I have, like, a walker. No, I'm just kidding. But, man, like, you're so eloquent, like, with your, with your wording, and I, I sincerely appreciate that about you. And I, I thank you for saying that, that and addressing that because it's also... Um, it's different when you're making content because mm -hmm. you don't always have the forum to say this stuff. Um, For sure. Good call. It's maybe not the right moment. It's not the right whatever. And so by you saying make a podcast, it's like you're giving that opportunity to people who otherwise may have not had the chance to express some of these ideas and these the way you like, you know, as you were just mm -hmm. recalling. And so that's it and huge part to you. So I have to I have to thank Appreciate you for that, that, for setting this up and and no, I'm sure all the other creators who have been and will be on this podcast feel the same way. Oh, man. Way too kind. All right. Nice little wholesome <laughs> moment. A little wholesome moment on the yeah, pod. I wish course. this was in we'll person. Keep it, we'll keep it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, going from, again, going from friendship and just this, like, str this really solid moment of real respecting real. When we, when we initially spoke, you had talked to me about something about, um, I, I'd almost say it's, a trend it's a thesis for what's going to happen in the future in the creator space related to design and i really wanted mm -hmm. to get to this because i want to timestamp this because it's not really happening right now and then i'm excited in like yeah. five or ten years whenever you make your okay. mark to look back and be like yeah. i okay the gary v moment like he was talking about this okay. way way before but you were yeah. talking about how creators if creators are businesses like they need their own brand They're, they need their own brand identity so if you're doing a bunch of different ventures there's the colors can be located and you can say, oh, I know this is a Noah Jennings thing. Um, yet there's only a, a handful that actually have a logo. How did you yeah. come up with this? And why is it like from a business or just from a, an, a logo and a brand perspective? Why is it so important for creators to have their own logos? Yeah, yeah. And just like in, in brands in general, right? Because I think um, most creators don't have a branding uh, background. They just don't. And it's, mm. it's no fault of their own. And they're figuring it out as they go. But, you know, I've, I've talked with some of the biggest creators in the world. And I'm like, I'll ask them, so t what's your brand? And they're like, well, it's me. Or it's like my face or my whatever. And I'm like, you don't find that fascinating that you have tens of millions of people watching what you do. And if someone asked you to define your brand, it's just, well, it's me. Hmm. It's like, no. It's not, and it is, but mm. it's not, that's not it, you know? And I think, I think conversations like that and also conversations where, you know, I'm, I'm seeing these, these creators try to navigate the next step of being a creator, which is monetizing and, and turning that into like a, to an extent, a job, right? Uh, talking with these companies and like, the companies are like, we want to do a product with you. How do we do that? And it's, I've been in the back end of those conversations as not a creator, as a designer. Mm. And um, with, again, some of the biggest creators in the world, mm. and we're trying to make a product of them, and they're like, 
I'm like, do you guys have a logo? And they're like, um, well, we have merch. And I'm like, no, not what I'm asking for. <laughs> yeah. Right? Versus yeah. like if I ask, like, do you have a logo? Yeah, I'll send you our brand guidelines and you can use that. Okay, amazing. And it may seem so minute, it seems like really not that intense, right? But like, that's how you're going to bridge the gap between businesses who don't fucking understand creators mm -hmm. and creators who don't fucking mm -hmm. understand businesses. And like, it's a step in that way where once you have that, like, it's official, you've made yourself like, you know, professional and official and you know what's going on. It's much easier to have those. Sorry, I just knocked on mic. It's much easier to have those conversations with a brand. And I'm not saying that that's where it ends. I'm just like, that's where the, that's where the conversation starts. It's like, you creators need a logo. And I'm, it doesn't have to be front-facing. It doesn't have to be how people identify you. Like, I don't think that every creator should have a front-facing logo that they use for their audience. Because cool. I think their faces are so recognizable and their voice or their demeanor, their person is so recognizable that they don't need one. It's mm -hmm. not going to be as effective as that. Mm -hmm. But you can't put a face on a package that's clean or you can't put a face on this or whatever and so i'll tell you what too it's it's not just working with brands mm. it's the it's this it's the the life cycle of a creator right and we're talking like the highly successful ones the anomalies um the ones mm. who really just like crush it and they graduate from creator every single one of them starts a company every single one mr beast with feastables ludwig with offbeat you have any sort of streamer with an org, which is kind of the same thing, like an esports team or whatever, and this and that, but they all have, like, they turn into something bigger. Mm. And so it's like, with this influx of TikTokers and this, and this new rejuvenation of the creator economy and like what it can be, nobody is seeing that. And mm. nobody is looking at that and going, in three years, there's gonna be hundreds of these people with their own companies um, that aren't gonna feel seen or heard, or whatever, maybe even thousands. Uh, where, you know what I mean? And so it's, it's all these ideas that I wish I could just compile into one. I, I wish it was a Gary Vee moment, like you're saying, but it really is just the like, I see something, I see the potential for this to become a thing and I see nobody else taking action for it. I know that I, what I, I know that I have the experience and the capability and the willingness to learn everything in between to yeah. make it happen. Yeah. And yeah, so. Dude, it's funny how you talk about, you know, like history. Because yeah, you're essentially right? just bring, like you're you're taking what's worked in in history, and you're like, here's the proof. And so, if you want to be a credible business in the eyes of other people who are businesses, which right now you find there's a massive gap, here's a mate. Here's here's a really strong and easy thing to do. You just have to put time and maybe a bit of resources into. What's the what's the pushback? that you get if you talk to a creator or a creator's team and you're like, all right, like you got to build a brand. Like, what are they saying as to why not? Yeah, it's the, it's the same thing that I get from companies. It's like, well, why would it be worth it? And it's like, maybe it's not for you right now. Mm. That's the simple truth. And, and I, I, yeah. I'm, pretty, I'm pretty good at, at talking with clients and selling and, and not necessarily like always selling, but I like to say and I like to do is... Uh, I don't want to sell you my product. I want to sell you the solution that will work for you. And I tell mm. everybody that I have a conversation Smart. with that wants to Smart. get into business. I'm like, yeah, we're going to find you a solution. And whether or not that solution includes me, it's still going to happen. So like if your budget's too low, that's okay. I'm going to help you find someone who can get you what you're, that will be the most helpful for you, even yeah. if I get nothing from that. And that's just, that's a humanity thing, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But the pushback is, is it's not worth it. And it's like, there's a couple of ways that that conversation can go. If they're like, it's not worth it, period, and like there's no indication of um, it's not worth it yet or it's not worth it, whatever, I'd be like, okay, I will, I will set a reminder on my phone for a year and a half from now and I will DM you and I'm sure this answer will be different. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The other thing is like, we don't think it's worth it right now um, because we don't know what to do with it. Like, right? And it's like, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. you know, that's a fair question. And that's when I would say, well, what do you want to accomplish? Yeah. And that's, you know, that conversation go everywhere. And then it's like, I can tell you 99% of the time, a brand will help you with all those things. The um, mm -hmm. third thing is, uh, we don't think it's worth it right now because of the money. We know we need one, but we don't think that this price is right. And it's like, that obviously stems off into, well, if it's not right for you, 
um, I can explain to you why it's worth it. And I can explain to you why maybe your thinking is, is not on the spot of what, you, what you're thinking is not worth it is very different than what I'm offering. Mm. And the second thing is if it's really not worth because they just don't have the money for it, then it's like, regardless, like I've started forming a relationship with you. I want to help you. And mm. I usually get very inspired by what people are doing and I love playing a part in that. So it's like, if you got 50 bucks, I can send you to a website right now where you can kind of make some, you know, template logo or something that'll just at least be helpful to get mm. you in the door, right? And then maybe down the line you have you have more capital to spend on something and more like to get a more robust branding system or something like that. But mm. I think at the end of the day, the pushback is always like, is it worth it for us? And the answer is fucking yeah, it is. Mm. Like it absolutely is worth it. There's mm. there's very few arguments I can think that would even be like a, a worthwhile contest to saying it's not worth it, right? Hundred, hundred percent. So, very long answer, the, but I think you're asking that. <laughs> no, man, no. It's I think it's so important because again, it's I wasn't thinking about it when you told me this earlier, um, and it's not a innovative thought. You're just like, yo, I'm applying what is true in a business context and. Everyone's saying, hey, brand, hey, creators, you're the new brand, you're the new media company, you're, you're the new founder, right. whatever. So if you want to be, there's core tenants to being, one, seen in the eyes of those people as credible, but two, in just right. allowing your brand to, to live beyond your face, your voice, and your sound. Yeah, it and exists. I feel like, yeah, it exists as its own thing. And that seems to be the opportunity, is like you don't need the voice or the face of Noah Jennings but this can be a brand that you start building and people can start recognizing, oh, it's, there's all, it's always black, white, and this, let's say, like this brick background, randomly. And it's like, oh, well, I think I've seen that before. But it doesn't have to be like, I hate that guy. That guy's annoying as shit. I don't like his content. Well, if you yeah. really like the product or you, if you like the outcome, Here's a you're going to you. Yeah, you're going to vibe yeah. with it. So, dude, it, it seems like too untapped of an opportunity. Yeah, exactly. And, it, and like, I, uh, if you don't mind, I'd, I'd love to... Go kind of keep that that discussion going but it's go, go, go. there's go, go. multiple things i have for it of is like one of the major things i see is that there's an there's an, a difference between people who are designing like getting out of design school and stuff and maybe it's like your your freelancers your small business owners yeah and your massive studios like literally i could see one in your background ogilvy is a huge design studio in chicago i think and they're commanding six-figure minimums for their work People don't have six figures to spend on on a marketing campaign. They just don't. Like small business mm -hmm. people don't. And mm -hmm. then your small business owners don't have the capacity for, you know, to make something like that. And it's it's so there's always this like kind of like supply and demand, like budget and capability issue. And and I think that while that can be applied in a lot of places, the one that I'm beyond interested in and that I, I think is is the creator world. And I think mm -hmm. that it's that thing where no design studio is gonna take on a creator as a client, unless that yeah. creator has crazy money to spend, crazy. Mm -hmm. And I don't blame them. Like it's, you, sure. you're a massive studio and I get it. Um, and this is not your demo, but it's like, the other thing is that these creators who are burgeoning into businesses are being ignored by your, the small businesses for the most part. They're not thinking mm -hmm. of like, let me go after this space. The small business people are going after small businesses and being like, yeah. Yeah. you own this mom and pop shop. Like, let me change your brand. And Maybe it's just like the way that I'm like kind of paraphrasing that, but I see this space of like these people who are not being tailored and marketed to that will end up being the leaders of companies in 10, 15 years. And I'm okay. dead serious. Like, mm. you know this too, right? Like mm. you could probably name five creators off the top of your head that will be CEOs of massive multi-million dollar companies in the next 10 years. So and true. like, it's not even a stretch. It's not even so like a, true. oh, maybe it's like, I, I'm willing to hedge my bets again, like for you. Mm. But yeah, it's a, it's, it's a fascinating thing. It's a fascinating like realm. And I think it's one of those things too, where you can't really market to people if you don't understand them. And I mm. think I understand creators. I feel like I am one. So yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I feel like I, think I, I, I am. Feel, I feel like, like you are. Yeah, I, feel I like don't you know. Are like, I don't, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's exactly that where it's like, yeah. Before, when I was working with creators from the company side, which I have, I've worked with big, small, medium, whatever you want to call it, um, I always was like, God, these, we're paying the 16-year-old $10,000 to post a 20-second story on Instagram 
and they're waiting till the last minute to send me in deliverables. Like, how fucking entitled, like, you know, just like what you would traditionally think of when you think mm. of, like, working with creators. And sure. then I become a creator, and I'm like, this shit's a lot harder than I thought it was. And not a lot of people have the same experience as I do of sure. understanding what that back end looks like. So they're just trying to figure it out as they go, too. Mm. And so I think being a creator puts me in a beyond perfect like position to take a huge swing at that and be like i get okay. you and i hear you let's make some cool shit and let's make you official let's make mm. what you're doing real and outlast this ephemeral moment of attention that you're getting because at the end of the day it is no matter how great of a creator you are you're not going to be around in 50 years probably mm. even less like probably mm. you know 10 years maybe mm. um and so it's like let's create something like you said let's create a legacy because yeah. a legacy exists separate of who you are and like a company does the same thing or a brand or whatever and so i just i think there's so much beautiful things to be made in that space mm. yeah dude you see it as you see it eye to eye and they see you eye to eye too so it's not like hey let's go to <clears throat> let's go to an ogilvy and you're in this big ass boardroom and you've got these suits and you've got these people that look intimidating because they've been they're svps of whatever yeah, here huge you are as client a people. Yeah, and yeah. here you are as a creator. And you're like, all right, like, I'm doing really well, but like, here's my stuff, here's what I got to do. And it's like, oh, my daughter watches you. Like, we let's work together, right? And it's like, oh, that's a weird statement to set the, yeah. to the tone. Whereas you're like, no, no, no. I have every set of experience along the spectrum. I know what you're feeling on both sides. So when you're saying to me, oh, it's not worth it, I'm not going to tell you why it's worth it from a business perspective, even though you know that's necessary. You're going to say why it's worth it from a creator perspective because of everything that you can relate to them by. Yeah. And even if there's the element of, oh, well, an Ogilvy will set up a creator branding division, the truth of it, man, is the moat is that you're a creator too and you have a vision far beyond their, like, their transactional nature. Oh, this is a new way to make revenue. Yeah, exactly. And it's, you know they can weigh the, the, like the capacity and the stuff in front of you. But it's like, it's kind of like, uh, when like a former professional athlete retires and they start a company or they start a camp for kids to come learn football, mm. they don't have to market for shit. Yeah. Like you could have been a, you could have been a, a third string professional quarterback that never saw the light of day on a, on a football field or whatever. And you could start a football camp and be booked for the next 10 years. Like, 100. And it's because people trust you and they know that like, well, he did it. So maybe he knows what he's talking about. And like, yeah. um, yeah, I think it's the same thing with like the creator. It's like, if I'm going after a creator who's like, nah, I don't, I don't trust these white colors. I don't think they get what I'm doing. It's like, I do. Yeah. And I know what you're, I know what you're feeling. And I, I know that pain, maybe not as much as you do, but I'm aware of it. And I know how to operate within those bounds and how to ex exceed them. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah, dude, credibility. Credibility is one thing, but I think credibility in becoming like the master of a craft, right? It's like you've shown time and time again. It's like give you I don't know, like Photoshop or whatever other Adobe yeah. programs you're using. <laughs> like right. let me show you time. Like I can do this in my sleep. I can do this in a second. I was just interviewing um, a creator that goes by the name of Utopia.us. His name is Cho, or he goes by him. Cho. Yeah, that guy's insane. Love him. And what he was saying in the interview, and I'm excited to drop it, is. He was like, I just knew that I wanted to be all encompassing when it came to clothing design, but I knew that I had to be like the best in one aspect because then I'm going to get pulled into a project and they're going to say, hey, Cho, we need your cut and sew ability. And he's going to be there and then they're going to, and then he'll hear them say, oh, well, you know what? I actually think we need uh, pallets. And he's like, oh, yeah, I can do that. And they're like, oh, well, you're yeah. here now. Okay, cool. Go do it. You, like you need that. You need that thing that no one else is as great at. To, to, to do it in your sleep so when you get in the room, easy for you, and then you're observational of what, like, what are the other things you're doing. And so that's what you have, right? Like you, you, yeah. it's in your sleep, you can do this stuff. And so they're like, whoa, holy shit, all right, what's next? And you're like, well, oh, you need help with overall brand design? Like, let's jump in. And yeah. the opportunity's there. Exactly, yeah. And, and Utopia is an a incredible creator. I know nothing about sewing and whatever, and I'm just mesmerized by... <laughs> I, what he creates, I think it's incredible. Um, but yeah, and, and and that's kind of been my motto for shit too, because yeah, once I get in the room, 
it's like, well, they, we brought you here for this. And I'm like, now I'm going to show you what I'm actually capable of. And mm-hmm. I do that. And it's like, it's like, okay, well, we just need a logo. I'm like, cool. Do you want this? You know, do you want the other branding too? Like the typography? Well, okay. Yeah. yeah. We can use that too. I'm like, all right, cool. Do you want a marketing strategy for this also? It's like, well, yeah, three. Okay, cool. Well, you're going to need a website. I can build that too. <laughs> yeah. Do you want me to build that for you? And they're like, oh, okay. Yeah. And so then it's like suddenly you're right. Like it's the, it's the being a specialist in something but being a generalist and a lot of other things will get you crazy opportunities. And like, mm-hmm. just like Utopia, it's like, I know who I'm going to if I need custom, like, you know, specific fashion because he gets the idea, but I'm sure that I could ask him for other, other stuff and he'd be able to do it too. For sure. And so, for sure. Yeah. So important, man. Damn. Yeah. So important. I'm excited. I, I'm excited when, <laughs> when you start different things and you start doing things uh, beyond your client work with regular brands and being a creator and creating your content, obviously keep doing you. Um, Thank you, man. Yeah. But Ed, when you actually, when you can put everything that you're fighting for and everything you believe in, like so wholeheartedly into that yeah. creator side, and then you're going to have that like 17 year old kid who's trying to figure out what to do with their life. And they're like, man, like you've inspired me to like do X. And you're like, damn, that's kind of crazy. And it's like, yeah. wow, how did you know? And you created the moment, inspired other people. So I'm going to end off with this, there's always, there's five, there's five questions. There's five questions. I'd say there's five and a half questions to end off. Okay. And I, I'm doing this all the time now. So first question is what environment are you in where you're your most creative? Oh, shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting, but now I'm like, um, it's ironic, but usually anywhere where I'm alone. Okay. Anywhere I'm alone, I can be really creative. I, but on the flip side, I've been extremely creative with like the most busy, like noisy fucking room or whatever. Let me, I gotta re-answer that because like. No, you're good, you're good. Like for me, it's, for me, it's walking. When there's movement, that's not that laborious from a cardio perspective. And it's, so it's like my, my conscious is now being taken up by these things happening around me. And then the subconscious can almost come through and be like, oh, this is really what you think. That's where I'm my most creative. And so that's why I'm always interested to know where everyone else lies. I have my, I have my answer now for you. That's better go, than like, oh, we're going to in with everybody. <laughs> Most like paradoxical fucking response I could have given you. Um, it's, when I'm, it's when I'm listening to music. Mm, and well, mu- that's like, oh, music, yeah, though? like how profound. It's like everything. And I think it's, it's okay. building a Rolodex of music that forces you into a mood, into an energy. And mm. I think like... Hmm. I listen to like heavy, like deep funk remixes of like Sick. popular songs when I'm oh, like, cool. I'm like sitting down, like ready to go focus. You know what I mean? Or I'll turn on some fucking Twilight, uh, Paramore Twilight song when I'm kind of feeling a little bit more like step back and breathe and like, and like, and feel your emotion. But I yeah. think that's so underrated that people mm. don't specifically use specific types of music to mm. elicit emotions from themselves that allow them to work and create and do and do different things. Damn. Yeah, the the interview right before this with a incredible creator, Elliot Walker, who's a storyteller. And he was saying that he write like all he writes all his scripts to music. Like he'll hear a song and he'll be like, okay, that's exactly what I'm going for. Okay, I'm gonna keep listening to the song as I'm writing my three page script, because that's gonna yeah. give me that, that's gonna put me Brilliant. in that world. That's cool. I re- yeah. I really like that perspective. Okay, number two. And you can go, you spoke about music, so we can go music, but we can go the other one as well. What has been, what's the most impactful book you've read or who's the most impactful artist and or album that you've ever listened to? Oh, man. I'm going to be generic and say go. Frank Ocean, Blonde. Okay. No, I think sure. I was, he kind of was popping off before I was aware of him with Channel Orange, but he yeah. has some heaters on Channel Orange, Pyramids. Yeah. Super rich kids, Forrest Gump, yeah. like. But I think the mystery of who he is as a person and how he translates that into his art and the way that he's able to maintain relevance without, mm. not that it's like, oh look how he can continue being famous without doing anything. I think he's fascinating, and I think mm. he's, I think he's genius in his own right, and I, mm. he's was a huge inspiration to me. Love that answer. Third question is, if you were to get the opportunity to give a TED talk. Either what would the title be or what would you talk about? TED Talks has actually commented on one of my videos before and I, I asked oh, them no if way. I could give a TED Talk and they, they didn't respond. So um, <laughs> It'll foreshadowing. Happen. It'll foreshadowing, happen. yeah. That It'll just happen. means the story arc is gonna be better. So Ooh, I like that mentality. Um, 
if I could give a TED talk, I'd probably give a TED talk on, um, it'd probably be titled something like why your brand sucks. Yeah. And I would I talk like about my journey of fucking up brands in a public atmosphere and turning that into a thing where I'm making brands great. And I, hmm. you know, public atmosphere. Cool. So yeah. Yeah. From the depths of something dirty to the, to the yeah. riches of something beautiful. I like that a lot. That's sick. Okay. The last two are similar ish, but they have different okay. tones. First question is who's a creator that you feel is underrated right now for any reason. It could be someone massive that you're like, I think they're going to be like, they should, they should be bigger. Or it could be the person who you're good friends with that has 5k that no one really knows. I think Icon Brick is the first one that comes to mind. He's, I wouldn't say he's underrated social numbers wise. He has several hundred thousand on TikTok. Cool. Uh, I think he just hit a hundred K on Instagram. So good for congrats <laughs> to him. But he is brilliant. Hmm. And he's so smart and he's, he reminds me of like what I aspire to be, which is he's always trying new shit. He's like one day recreating Call of Duty. After, he, basically, sorry, let me, re, let me step back. His whole thing is that he remakes and designs things out of Legos and Lego renders. So he's, he's, his thing right now has been remaking album covers out of Legos and rendering it. And he's getting traction. It's amazing. It's beautiful work. But he doesn't stop there. Now he's like remaking Call of Duty, a functioning mm. working game out of Legos, entirely out of Legos. And then he's like making your own Lego customizer. He's starting to work with big artists about it. And I'm like, hmm. I'm, we've, we talk, I'm good friends with him and we've talked a lot. I'm like, I don't know how Lego is not sponsoring you because you are the future of like this. Like you are the, like the artist that people are going to be going to see in like in museums and shit 20 hmm. years from now. Like, wow. you know what I mean? And so- wow. I think he deserves so much more. I think he's going to get it. He's already, his momentum is crazy, but I think he's going to surpass what it means to be like relevant on social media and he's going to be doing some really cool shit. Dude, love it. All right, I've never heard of yeah. him. So I gotta, I'm got i definitely yeah, checking I'll that out. i have to send you his page. Definitely yeah. checking that out. And then okay, the fifth one is, again, similar, but a little bit more personal. Who's a creator that you would invest in today? And it could be anything. It could be time, it could be resources, but just someone that you feel if you gave them the resources, whatever those resources are that they would need right now, it would be the, it'd be the catapult to their career. I'm going to say Brick. I'm going to say okay. the same. Cool. Same I guy. Like that. Yeah. Cool. I think, cool. I think he's just is on the cusp of becoming like a cultural hmm. uh, recognized thing. And, and Damn. he's just got to get the right timing and the right people to say the right things. Yeah. Epic. Man. All right. All right. So I can break. This is someone, yeah. this is definitely someone I got to look break. into. Definitely yeah. look into it. So the point five question, because yeah. there isn't there isn't a right answer to this, because this is the way All that right. I get people to actually engage with your content. If there's no reason to already from this awesome conversation, is what is your most popular video on mm -hmm. TikTok? I redesigned Goldfish as a makeup brand. I, I think it's pushing. It's like 10.1 million views or something, and it was like. Goldfish commented on it saying they were like sending this to our product development team like right now. And I'm like, I was like, wait till you hear about the fragrance idea that I have that I haven't made yet. Um, but yeah, that one was a big one. And then Mr. Beast as a owning a bank uh, is a close second. It's at like 9.7 or something. And that got a Damn. lot of traction too. Damn. Okay. Well, we're going to send everyone, those will be in the show <laughs> notes. We'll send everyone to go check out those videos. But I got to ask one thing. Because you brought up the idea of, I mean, you're giving brands so many ideas all the time. How do you deal with that where you're giving ideas for free? If they want, they can be like, you know what? That was a great idea from that guy, Noah Jennings. Let's take it. Let's run with it. How do you, how do you view your own IP? It's difficult for sure. Mm -hmm. I've been like, why are you giving them these ideas for free? I get those comments all the time. And it's kind of like, if you're reading between the lines, I'm not. I have a massive platform that I'm putting this out on. That's a very mm -hmm. easy thing for someone to be like, wait, didn't that one person do this first? The second thing is that it's like, it's a challenge for me to not be attached to ideas because of the potential and hmm. always be putting out and always wondering if any creative person, you know, like ideas are not finite. Like they are mm. constantly evolving, constantly changing. And so mm. me putting something out is more of a time capsule rather than like a, uh, than something where I'm like, oh, well, you know, I could have made a lot of money on this. It's like, maybe. But money comes, money goes. Ideas are in the moment. You should put it out there. Hmm. Damn, what a statement, man. What a statement. <laughs> Thanks. Jesus. I'm going to be thinking about that for, for so long. 
yeah, hit me up again. Let's do this. Let's do yeah, this then. again. Yeah. Like, uh, in a year, let's have a follow up year I'm combo. So down. I'm so down. Hell yeah. I'm so down. Well, we got to do it in person. So I'll have to come yeah. out to Florida or whenever we're at a conference together or something next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll do some good stuff, man. Been an absolute pleasure. You are Likewise. a leg- You are a legend. It's crazy that again, t- only 2022, and this is time yeah. capsule now. So. Whew. In 2040 Can't years, wait to look at this. I don't know, man. Yeah. That'll be good. <laughs> That's gonna be. If you're Danny or Noah listening to this in 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, holy shit! Put a smile on your face because I'm sure it's something insane yeah. that's happened.